Hi, Dr. Gibson's and Mahmoud coming to you live from Sky 2016 talking about robotic angioplasty. I lovingly refer to the fellows as my radiation protectors, you know, uh, kind of by robotic approach. But you did a study of real robotic assisted angioplasties. Tell us about the design. Yeah, so Mike, uh, basically the impetus for doing this was, yeah, you know, the fellows might be a lesser expensive option to do this, but... but they uh, argue more. The robots don't argue. <laughs> the robots don't talk back and they right. do exactly what you want them exactly. to do. And so the impetus behind it really was the occupational hazards for, for the field. And we know that orthopedic injuries, radiation associated risks are a real problem and we're starting to increasingly recognize them. And I would say the biggest innovation with the robotic platform is the ability to remotely control guide wires, balloons, and stents. Right. So it doesn't have to be, it's not table side, you can be in the control room and that's where it's set up. And so we decided to uh, test the hypothesis of whether or not you could do complex PCI. Uh, the basic registry that got FDA approval was very simple, focal, non-C lesions. We went with an all-comer study design, and the only patients excluded from the trial were patients who you technically could not treat robotically. So it's an RX platform, so any over-the-wire cases or STEMI cases were excluded. Otherwise, it was an all-comer inclusion, and we compared simultaneous over 18 months patients treated robotically versus mm -hmm. being treated manually. And how many cases was it? <clears throat> so they were a total of just over 300 cases. Yeah. Uh, a, a total where 430 cases were included, but about 80 were excluded because of the robotic limitations. Okay. So the rest of them, with 108 in the robotic arm and 226 in the manual arm, and uh, on average we had 1.5 lesions treated in each group. Cool. And the primary endpoint was comparing the success, clinical success between the robotic arm and the uh, uh, manual group. And, and what was clinical success? How was that so defined? It was death, myocardial infarction, urgent repeat revascularization. And for the primary endpoint, the MI definition we used was a clinical MI with uh, the sky definition. Symptomatic. It had to be symptomatic yes. ischemic injury. Right. We also looked at the secondary endpoint of the periprocedural MI because I wanted to make sure we, have a, we had a sensitive marker right. uh, as well. Sure. So that was a secondary endpoint. So the primary endpoint, essentially we had one major event in each group. So it was mm -hmm. over 99% clinical success in both groups. Yeah. And that was defined as in hospital, not 30 days. Yes. The MACE events. Secondary endpoints we looked at were the periprocedural MI rates in both groups. And they were about 5.5% in the robotic and 8% in the manual. But statistically there was no difference. Sure. So it was felt to be comparable. Other endpoints we looked at were fluoroscopy times, radiation exposure from a, from a patient standpoint, contrast use, stent use as a resource, surrogate for resource utilization, and all of them were comparable in both strategies. And obviously, negligible exposure to the operator in a robotic arm. So previously it's been shown that 95% reduction uh, wow. to the primary operator. Yes. Um, we did look at robotic times as opposed mm -hmm. to manual times. They were about, on average, eight minutes longer per case, but it turned out it was only for the simple lesions. As you went to intermediate to more complex lesions, there was no difference really? or additional time required wow, with a robot. that's a little counterintuitive. I would have thought it would, it would expand the difference, but it contracted, interesting. Correct, and I think the reason we surmise that might have happened is the very simple, straightforward lesions manually we can do so quickly. So quickly, sure. That, that the understand. additional time in the robotic I setup. Get it now. I get it. Uh, okay. And then the final secondary endpoint was just measuring t uh, technical success, a right. procedure you could complete robotically or with minimal manual assistance without MACE. Right. And so 82% of the patients were done completely robotically and another 10% with minimal manual assistance. So we had a technical success of 92% wow. in the trial. So what's the next step? Where do we go from here with this? I think. It, these data need to be replicated in multiple centers with multiple operators. That That is sure. clearly very important. And across the spectrum of operator experience. Here, this was a single operator, uh, myself, and the idea was to control for that variability. So I think the proof of concept is there, that you can do right. robotic PCI in complex lesions in patients. Yeah. Now I think it needs to be tested broadly with all levels of clinical experience. So amazing, congratulations. What a great proof of concept. Great, thank you Excellent. very much. Thanks for joining us, and thanks for joining us here live from Sky 2016.